Good morning to you. Oh, I am knackered. It's Monday, there's something. Oh, Monday the 12th of June, which is very nice. If it's your birthday today, happy birthday. To be honest with you, I put this, I put the old camera on, I don't know what I'm gonna talk about. I might talk about nothing. If I talk about nothing, you'll never see this. So, but it's better to put it on and then delete it all afterwards and have a brainwave. I, um, I was at the surgery all day, over the weekend, pretty much on and off. Um, we had a problem with the uh, two surgeries that are on raised floors and the and we got some wet rot underneath the raised floor we had a leak and then uh, we thought we fixed it and then we found it was still leaking so we fixed it then we did we did definitely fix it the second time but then the the wet rot then got into the timbers and so we have had to lift up the um, floor and uh, replace some of the timber underneath and relay the floor so the guy the guy who <laughs> the guy who I bought the surgery off does not like spending money he does everything as cheaply as possible he caused he caused so much trouble for himself the staff were in revolt when I bought the place because he promised them pay rises and promised them bonuses for so long and never delivered on anything. And that was just the first of a long litany of problems which arose out of the fact that he's, you know, I mean, t to give you an idea. What's that? Don't tell me somebody's ringing me. Hang on, stand by. I thought I'd put the thing on airplane mode, but, uh, which I do to try and, uh, you know, uh, avoid any lip sync issues because I still haven't quite got to the bottom of what causes the lip sync issues. It could be anything. It could be not recorded in sync or it's not transferred in sync anyway. By the time it gets into the editing software, it's not in sync. So I'll still, I'll narrow it down anyway. But um, anyway, so, so yeah, so to give you an example of um, the problems that were caused by sort of saving money, was the um, we had some intro oil cameras, but um, and he's a great fan of uh, eBay and uh, buying stuff from you know getting it from some hooky Chinese manufacturer, which he sees as cutting out several middlemen and uh, buying the stuff from source. You know he's convinced that Siemens and uh, Dense Ply are, are rebadging Chinese crap. <laughs> So he just, he decides to get it directly. So we had these intro cameras that were really terrible, and uh, and uh, <laughs> so we had. I mean, I, I I to tell you how bad they were. I actually replaced them with some other Chinese cameras <laughs> that that actually work. But I think my Chinese cameras cost ninety pounds each, and his Chinese cameras probably cost six pounds each. So. I mean, they're not brilliant, but I mean, they are functional to the extent that we need them, you know. I mean, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't try and view bacteria down them, but, but on the other hand, you don't have to pay like £1,500 or £2,000 for a, for a, for a, you know, a badged, you know, sort of mugs, a mugs version from a top German manufacturer, which is, I'm sure, no, no doubt, technically superior, but just r ridiculously priced. And uh, you know, and it just carried on like that. You know, your, your things that were wrong with a chair that had been repaired with Impragum, and uh, oh, I don't know, the litany is to you know, uh, computers, problems with the computers because they, it was trying to do things that couldn't be done. You know, on uh, RAM that needed to be upgraded, computers that needed to be upgraded. That was about, but there wasn't. I mean, I went into it with my eyes open, so I knew I didn't know about all the Impragum repairs and everything. But so when this floor went rotten, it was not. It's not a massive surprise. I mean, my my sort of 
what I've come, what I've learned from this weekend is that, uh, well, let, let, let me just go back. Like about 20 years ago, I have a new floor in the toilet in my surgery, my original surgery in uh, uh, Tankerton, Whitstable. And um, so I sort of uh, worked out how to do it and laying, and I think it was a cork tile floor. So what you had to do is you had to put down hardboard uh, over the floorboards, first of all, and then that then has that, that that has to be stapled down basically because if you try and nail that down then when you come to pull it up again it's a nightmare so that's a tip, tip for today is if you're going to put a hard board down over your floor then staple it because you can literally then just lift it up and all the staples come out with it but once you've done that also it's much quicker um, then you glue your cork tiles over the top of the hardboard and cutting round a toilet and all that is quite, you know, that is quite a complicated job. Um, but anyway, I did it, and then shortly afterwards, I decided uh, there was a bit of money for uh, consultancy, a bit of subsidy, you know, the sort of thing where you, you get three thousand pounds worth of consultancy for fifteen hundred pounds, and the 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 charity or whatever the local authority that's giving it to you says oh well we'll we'll match your donation you know if you put in three fifteen hundred we'll put in fifteen hundred but I, I what I suspect is that the bloke who's doing the consultancy just agrees to do it for half price and the local authority or the charity then agrees to promote it and they don't, literally don't have any costs and the consultant just earns half what he would do normally, but which is still more than enough, considering how useless the bloody advice is. But um, he came in and he sort of had a look around and, you know, told me, and this is the, this is the key, right, to all consultancy advice, because people have asked me to do consultancy, and I did. When uh, the association, you know, when, when I was, I used to visit a lot of practices, and I used to look at the, the practices and then you can see straight away what they're doing wrong. You know, they're, they're mostly they're grossly inefficient. They're just not doing things, you know, no, nobody sort of sat down and said, well, what's the most cost effective way of doing this? And not, you know, and that's because in most surgeries, it's the receptionist and the nurses that are doing a lot of the organizing and they're not, they're just not coordinated enough and, and don't have enough experience in other businesses to see uh, it's like if you get a practice manager and I mean I've got my receptionist said to me I want to be the practice manager so I'm like okay that's fine but really a practice manager is a massive job if, uh, if a corporate if I owned a corporate body and I had say 20 surgeries I'd want to have 20 practice managers in there running them but they would need to run them you know I mean they would have to do things like um, look at the profit and loss sheet, uh, management accounts, look at the balance sheet and make management decisions, you know, day to day. <laughs> they'd have to manage to make a profit for a start. Uh, they'd have to manage to recruit and keep the staff. And that's when most people, most receptionists say, I want to be a practice manager. What they mean is I want more pay. I'd like uh, an, you know, an improvement in my job description that comes with a pay increase please and then as to what they can do for that you know what can they can they I mean my practice manager is very capable she does all the practice accounts for example which means basically typing in the invoices and reconciling the uh, the credit books with the bank account but that's not really managing that's that's administering so anyway wind back so when you're doing consultancy, you go in to a place and you say, look, now, for example, you don't have staff contracts. You need to put some staff contracts in. So they, oh, so they, oh, have you, oh, have you got any? Yeah, I can get you a pro forma staff contract. Okay, that's great. Can you send us some? Yeah, okay, I'll send you some. We don't know how to fill them in. Could you fill them in for us? And that's the problem. That's where your consultancy that's when you decide that you're not going to do consultancy anymore because your 
what you do is the, the sort of the surgeries that tend to call you in are they're making sort of quite decent money because it's quite hard not to make decent money as a dentist but they um, they they really are not uh, you know in some areas in, in the areas in which they're seriously deficient it's very difficult to know how to deal with that you know there's not really much in the way of training you know you, what, what you can do is you can obviously you can say no look my job is not to run your surgery it's just to tell you where you need to make changes to uh, run it more efficiently and that doesn't include filling in um, your staff contracts but you know so you need to get a if you're having trouble with that you need to get a solicitor to help you draw them up fill them in oh yeah but you know it would only take you like 10 seconds which it would, but that's not, you know, but I don't work for you, you know, I sort of, <laughs> I've discharged my obligation in coming to see the practice and now, you know, I don't, I don't want to become your practice manager. So, the, this guy, this consultant said to me, you know, why are you as a dentist laying a floor in a toilet? And I've always remembered that question because if only because it came as a surprise to me but not for the reason that you think that is it came as a surprise to me because my immediate response was are you an idiot I do everything around here <laughs> you know, I am everything when I have this standing joke when people ring up and say could I speak to the guy who um, organizes your info IT I say yeah yeah just a minute I'll go and get him and I put the phone down and then walk around for a bit and then come back to the phone and say hello yeah uh, oh yeah, hello, hello. We're IT. You know, we do uh, search engine optimization and uh, uh, backup uh, services. Oh yeah, no, sorry, not interested. Okay, <laughs> they must hang up and think, and that's weird because that that second bloke sounded an awful lot like that first bloke. <laughs> can you, you know, hello? Can you put me through to the person who buys your uh, your office supplies? Yeah. Oh yeah. Wait a minute, he's out the back. Hang on a second. So I'll go out, <laughs> leave him hanging around for a bit, make myself a cup of tea. Come back. Hello? <laughs> Hello, yeah. Are you the office supplies by? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, what? what, what? <laughs> Only if I've got time, you know. Don't wind up people if it's wasting your time. You're wasting their time. Don't waste your time as well. So he says to me, you know, but what? He says, oh, it's a lovely floor. Because I said, oh, I said, look, I said, look at this floor. Isn't it lovely? I did that. He says, because, yeah, well, obviously it's a lovely floor, but. <laughs> Should you really be laying a floor as a dentist? And I'm like, eh, who else is going to do it? <coughs> like this floor, like this floor is about a meter by two meters, right? You try and get someone in and say to them, actually, what I'd like is a really nice cork over over hardboard floor in this toilet, please. Like <laughs> two square meters, you know. And I don't really want to pay much more than the raw materials. <laughs> I don't, you're not going to get many quotes for a job like that. And, I, and, the, and the sort of quotes that you are going to get are going to be from someone who's got a cousin who does that sort of, you know, who might do that for you as a, as a sort of a semi-favour. <laughs> no, these, these jobs do not end well. So anyway, so I laid the I laid the floor, and then he he gave me a load of advice. Which is when the consultants come in, I'll tell you what they'll do. They'll tell you uh, basically to work a bit faster and harder, and possibly work uh, stay open a bit longer. You know, and that's the gist of it. That's the gist of it. Just do basically what you're tweaking, what you do. Just tweak it a bit and do just pull your thin finger out and just do a bit do it a bit more you know and so you're all geared up and you're all motivated and you've got the staff together and you've all had a staff meeting and perhaps you've had a, a working lunch and uh, you know there's PowerPoint spreadsheets and presentations flying around and everyone's oh Mr Watson's got a big consultant in and da 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 and then what happens is the first couple of months is brilliant you your turnover shoots up you're like 10% over 20% over what you normally do because everybody's working really hard and then like a year later you're back to normal 
just what is sustainable is sustainable and what isn't sustainable isn't but the consultants are able to say yeah well 90 percent of the cases i've been there their turnovers up 10 percent within two months they've their turnovers up 20 percent following my advice and they're both they're, you're both correct they, they have done it so anyway this is why i've done the floor because we discovered the floor wasn't right on Friday or Thursday or something. We had got the floor up. Friday we had two surgeries out of action. I rang. Uh, <clears throat> I uh, one of the patients was a damp specialist, and I said to him, uh, "You know, what do you think?" And he was helpful because he he did say to me, "It's uh, it is uh, wet rot," which was useful to know. And uh, he said. You know, I'll, he said, I'll, I'll give you the, and I'll get someone from my firm to give you a ring. He said, it'll be me that does it, but, you know, obviously if you get it through the firm, then uh, you'll get a guarantee. So I'm like, well, okay, but I'd need this surgery back in action by Tuesday, because we've got two dentists working here Tuesday. So he's like, okay, so what do they, ring me up? Uh, yeah. Uh, well, we can get like a field engineer, technical person around to do you like an on-site report uh, Wednesday. How's Wednesday suit you? So I'm like, well, no, that's completely useless. Wednesday doesn't suit me at all. Wednesday is two days after I need to have the job finished. Not the day on which some spotty oil is going to come round and take a further week to give me a technical report saying that I've got what I already know, which is wet rot. So anyway, a friend of mine and I had the floor up yesterday and we put it down yesterday afternoon. Surgery back in commission, wet rot firm out of business. You don't need it. You can't, in America, you could just ring up a flooring technician and he would come round and you'd say, yeah, I'll do it for you over the weekend. And that's what you need in a surgery. You need, you need supplies that can do stuff for you over the weekend. Because this is, surgery time is an asset and you have to sweat it, you know, you can't, you can't just sit there with the uh, surgeries out of action. Right, okay, let's go and see if the staff have had the nails to put the lino back down, which I think they probably will have done. As soon as I sent them a group text yesterday, telling them to, the floor had been fixed, but they're gonna need to pull their fingers out and get it working. Sorry about the camera problems. Anyway, that was an awful lot of talking about nothing, wasn't it? I'll um, have a nice day at work, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.